Hey guys, it's Blokum here, and today we are going to fly the hip. We are going to fly past this mountain range back here. There are a couple of our guys who are stranded there, and they desperately need our help. We are the only helicopter around, and so, uh, yeah, our mission is pretty important. Anyway, that's uh, the story I made up. It's uh, really good, I know. Um, yeah, anyway, let's get this started. Now before we are going to continue, I want to give you a heads up that this mission will end pretty badly, pretty quick. So most of the time you just see me flying and uh, yeah, just don't want to get your hopes up. <laughs> Alright, let's start off by flipping some switches, which is probably one of the most satisfying things in the hip if you ask me. Flipping switches, the sound is just so satisfying. Mm. Click, click, and let's start the APU, and the temperature should start rising, and so shoot the pressure, and once it stabilizes at about two something something, two kilograms per square centimeter, I have no idea what it, that converts to, then uh, we should be good to start the engine, and right about now. So let's see where the wind is coming from. I think it's, yeah, we got a headwind, so it doesn't really matter which engine we start first. And it isn't even modeled in DCS anyway, so. Let's start with the left engine first. Release the brake, the rotor brake. Rotor brake, otherwise it won't start. And pull that lever, the fuel lever, I think. And now you should see engine one spinning up. And once it passes the 60%, it should, uh, it should be running on its own. And we can start the second engine. But in the meantime, I'm going to steal some power from the APU so that I can set up my countermeasures. And my radio while we're at it. Um, I'm not going to use the radio anyway, but it's kind of standard procedure for me when I'm flying online. So let's turn that on. Countermeasures. Let's dispense four flares each time on both sides. Now we need to be flying at about 112 degrees. Um, it's not that important because it it isn't too far away anyway but just as a point of reference let's set it up and these guys are on the east uh, side of town but we'll see that soon enough and my engine is now at 72 percent so let's start the second engine usually pretty much usually I forget to uh, pull this second lever and I need to start all over again yeah short-term memory is a snitch so anyway let's uh, see how she spools up Ooh, slow motion running I hope they uh, will soon release some new models for these uh, these soldiers because if you compare them to the World War II soldiers uh, those look way better and more high definition these are I think uh, what they, they could probably be like uh, 10 years old already <laughs> I don't know anyway all right so both engines are running let's stop the APU and let's enable our weapon systems okay now I want to start running off our own generators so let's increase the engine power to the engine RPM to 88% 
and let's flip some more switches generator one and two and the rectifiers to convert AC to DC and turn on the engine protectors I'm not sure if that does anything actually uh, I'm not sure if that's even modeled but let's do it anyway and enable the Doppler system and let's make sure our anti-icing is off yeah okay don't need that here in Turkey and let's also enable moaning Olga there you go hi there radar altimeter on takes a little while before it comes on actually and enable and check our autopilot if you're new to the hip and you feel like you're flying really unstable just make sure that you enable the autopilot this one here otherwise it might feel like you're slinging from tree to tree like a little monkey all right come on little fella you can do it it always takes longer than you you're anticipating just want to make sure it works there you go and let's do a quick test all right looking good I don't know why that always drifts but and of course uh, once the Doppler or radar altimeter is on somehow it loses my uh, autopilot I'm not sure why that is it's probably the way it's uh, supposed to be but sometimes I forget and uh, I'm slinging from tree to tree like that monkey so I think that's it and I think we're ready to head on out release the brake and try to stabilize it a bit usually it starts rolling here and once you're up in the air just don't try to fight it too much usually you're just uh, overcorrecting and it will make you really unstable so just loosen that that hand and uh, let her do her thing all right we're all good let's gain some speed I won't be able to make it uh, across these mountains in one go because uh, it's just too high so I'm going to turn around first and gain some altitude also don't want to get caught in these uh, power lines down here but in the meantime we can enjoy the beautiful view just look at these uh, the sun hitting the coastline there up north it still amazes me how much these new cloud systems and probably the whole weather system adds to the whole experience in DCS you can really sense the depth if you look at the mountain range back there gorgeous all right let's uh, Let's bring her back around.
Ooh, that seems like a real steep road back there, crossing that mountain. Challenge accepted. Maybe next time. Alright, everything's still good. And actually, while we're up in the air, I might as well just turn off the, the engine dust protectors. So it should give me more power. And I don't need them here anyway. Um, actually, I'm not sure if, uh, if that's modeled in DCS in the hip. But I'll turn them off anyway. Let's also set our sights for about, I don't know, maybe 500 meters or something? 600? I'm not sure. And let's do a quick test. To see if we're aligned, aligned correctly. But we'll have to figure it out when we're... Uh, when we're there anyway. So let's pick a spot like that tree back there and see if we're pretty close at about 600 meters. Yeah, close enough. And let's also check our countermeasures. Great, because we're probably going to need them. I need more power. And look at that view. That's so darn pretty. You can feel the space. It's so humongous. Also, thanks to this whole lighting system and the cloud system. I know, it's just freaking amazing. So the town that we are heading for is um, somewhere behind my compass. And uh, actually, I gotta be honest, I didn't realize there was a compass there. <laughs> it's the first time I, uh, I noticed it. That, that could come in handy. Right there. Now, our enemies and our friendlies that are pin pinned down back there are s probably somewhere on the east side right there. And I think I'm s I see some smoke there. Uh, and I'd like to keep my altitude for now because, you know, there could be some man pads there. Who knows? And man pads, in other words, are just... Uh, air to ground missiles carried on his shoulder I think I'm seeing some smoke back there and I'm not sure if that has anything to do with our guys because there's some more smoke in the region here but I also see some fire. Could be an indication. 
Who knows? Let's just keep an eye out and, uh, you know, that would be great to actually have uh, a multi-crew on the MI-8, on the hip. Because right now it's pretty hard to keep an eye out for your environment. And since we don't have a early missile warning system, you have to keep looking around all the time. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's our target back there. Man pad. Too close for comfort. <laughs> and someone's popping a flare back there. That must be our guys who are pinned down. So, let's try to quickly establish where that man pad came from, the missile came from because we need to take him out as soon as possible before we get hit but I'm not really sure exactly where it came from, somewhere between those trees there but I need a closer look do I dare to get any closer? Yes, I do. Something else shooting at us, at us back there. It's getting really crowded right now. <laughs> All right, I think... I see some units back there, so let's let's get in there. And I think that that right there needs some missiles. Break. Pop some flares. Make a run for it. And pop some more flares. Of course. Yikes. <laughs> Too close. Too close. Let's um let's hit the deck. This is not cool. And let's come around from behind the tree line. Right. Oh, I guess we are hitting the deck. All right, all right. <laughs> well, I guess it's time to go camping. Got a fire going here. Let's cast some fishing lines and uh, grab your marshmallows and we can just stay overnight here. That's a beautiful spot. Couldn't have picked a better one. Anyway, guys, um, yeah, that's kind of disappointing. Uh, I really wanted this to work out, but that's how it goes sometimes. And, uh, well, you just uh, got to stay positive and uh, enjoy this nice evening so thanks for watching and uh, I hope to see you next time bye bye